What's going on everyone? Austin John Placer and today we're going to be talking about early game rupee farming in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> Hi, it's now me at the end of the video. In this video, I'm gonna be going over methods that worked in Breath of the Wild and now work in Tears of the Kingdom that don't use exploits, just methods. I'm gonna be talking about the exact science and monetary gain on cooking specific dishes and why they're not worth it. I'm gonna be talking about converting luminous ore into other different types of ore and how that's not worth it. I'm gonna be talking about the various mini games that exist in the world and how those are not worth it. And then I'm gonna be going over what you should actually be doing toward the end of the video. But I am gonna be talking about good habits that you should instill upon you throughout your expansive journey throughout all of Tears of the Kingdom. So please don't just fast forward to, to that little bit there at the end. Like I'm gonna be going over some important things here and some, some good lessons. I've edited this down. This was a four hour session and it's a short video. So if you just do me a favor and, and, and get through the important stuff, then you're rewarded with all the money at the end. Listen, as soon as there's like a, a great exploit like snow bowling was in Breath of the Wild, I'm gonna make a video about that. I'm gonna boop it right there, right now. If there was no boop, that means that there isn't like a, a neat thing that you can do currently. And just everything in this video remains true. Great. The first thing I have to say is you shouldn't be having trouble with money in this game. And if you're having trouble with money in this game, I guarantee two things. One, you're not finding enough caves, and two, you're not going into caves and actually breaking the ore. There's so much ore in the underground caves for you to make money with. Every time that you're gonna be finding a cherry blossom tree out in the world, make a note of it, put it on your map as a marker, because anytime that you come to it and you offer an apple, Satori is gonna be appearing. And the most magical part about Satori, other than beautiful blue glow is that it's going to be lighting up all of the caves in that vicinity now it stretches pretty darn far so you should take this opportunity to go mark all these caves go to them explore them and every time that you see or even non-rare ore, just break it Anytime you see one of these giant rock walls, destroy the whole rock wall. Usually while you're destroying it, it's gonna be dropping rocks and rusty claymores or some sort of weapon to help you break down the walls even more so, so you can conserve your bombs. Or if you already did the Goron quest line, you have an ability that helps you break rocks. Honestly, in this game, I'm gonna be doing the Rito, the Goron, and then I'm gonna be playing for like another 80 hours and then I might do the other two through casual play and not specifically hunting for ores or anything else. I've accumulated two diamonds, 23 rubies, 17 sapphires, 17 topaz, 49 opal, 133 amber, and 35 luminous stones. I will admit when I see luminous stones, I usually don't break them because there isn't that great of a use for them. While it's no longer needed for you to purchase the radiant armor, you can then upgrade the radiant armor, but honestly, I didn't even get the radiant armor. Like I saw it and I was like, nah, I don't want that. But there's another thing that you can do with Luminous Ore in this game. If you make your way over to Lake Floria and the Farron area down here, next to these giant massive lakes, you're gonna be finding Bronus Forest. And in Bronus Forest is going to be Dondons. Dondons is a brand new species, we never heard of them before, pretty neat. And these bad boys eat luminous ore. And then after a certain period of time has passed, you come back here and on the ground, you're gonna be finding a random assortment of gems, including Ruby, they do amber in pairs, a sapphire. There's a fifth guy back here that I fed. I don't know where his drop is. I did this at about three hours ago. I tried a variety of date changes, of save spamming, of reloading the saves, and then also, of course, sleeping at a campfire. I haven't been able to find a consistent way yet in order to have these constantly churn things out. So all you gotta do is go in front of one, take out a luminous ore, put it right in front of him. You're gonna see him react to it, and then he's gonna munch away at it. There's a total of five of them, and while it's not a very fast or effective method, it's a background method while you're doing other things. Number four, he's off on the side. Make sure that they actually respond to it. Good. They do take quite a while to actually eat it. They're not fast creatures at all, but then again, you know, they eat rocks, and they don't roll up like Gorons, so what do you expect? 
After your fifth and final one is done eating, then you can go away. Also, while you're here, if it's not, you know, a thunderstorm out, you done eating, bro? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sleep till morning. As long as you have clear conditions, right now I have my Sensor Plus set to Bladed Rhino Beetles, because I need them to upgrade my Barbarian Armor to the final level. Oh, look, it was that fourth ones. Found it, it was that Opal. After my video about, you know, getting the Barbarian Armor and upgrading it and everything, and these trees, these very large trees all throughout Farin have a chance to have the Bladed, the Energetic, and the Armored Rhino Beetles. So if your sensor plus is set to that while you're in this area, you may find them on trees and they can actually produce you some of the most valuable elixirs in the game. Speaking of making you valuable elixirs, when it comes to cooking, every single item has a value. And then once you cook either into food or elixirs, those various parts are then going to be combined. And it has changed since Breath of the Wild. In fact, it's been nerfed severely to be honest with you if you're going to be cooking one item then whatever the value of that one item is you're going to multiply that by 1.2 if you're cooking two items you're going to add their values together multiply by 1.3 cooking three items is 1.4 four items is 1.6 and five items in a dish which is the most valuable is 1.8 so if you ever have a surplus of items in your inventory for example if you have a bunch of lionel guts that you have no uses for these sell for 200 rupees each. You can then combine this with some very valuable insects like energetic rhino beetles. These boys right here, energetic rhino beetle which sells for 30 rupees and then each lionel guts which sells for 200 rupees is a total of 830 rupees. You're then going to be combining all of that and multiplying by 1.8. You don't need a blood moon or a critical cook or anything and you're going to get an energizing elixir. The difference is this energizing elixir is going to have a value of 830 times 1.8 because we used five different items. At this time you're now able to go to any vendor that you want. I usually find a beetle at one of these ranches. I don't know where beetle is. Here he is. Now that one elixir I made is going to be five ingredients times 1.8 for a total of 1,494 rupees. It no longer rounds like it did in the last game. Also in the last game, it was times 2.8. So you no longer get nearly as much value for cooking things that you did in the last game. And I don't have any use for those Lionel Guts because the Barbarian Armor doesn't take Guts, it only takes the various horns. However, if you just want to cook some easy food for some easy money, your gourmet meats and your whole birds are going to be worth 35 rupees each. Taking that 35, adding them together for 175, multiplying by 1.8 is going to be 315 rupees. I've done math and testing, there's no difference if you mix all of them together as the same one or if you're going to be mixing between the two different ones as long as you just cook five quantity of the most valuable thing that's going to be a cook specifically for rupees each of these sells for 315 rupees per skewer as opposed to the regular ones that i'm constantly eating that are only worth nine but i'm just you know taking advantage of the no one shot mechanic some of the dishes that the NPCs are going to be giving you that you never plan on eating, like this sneaky elixir, I don't plan on ever, you know, really eating that, so I'm going to sell that. So because of that, it might be worth it to go help out all the guys who are trying to put the signs up everywhere. Unfortunately, most of the really valuable food other than the gourmet meats and the whole birds comes from hardy food, which at this time, there's not a really good efficient farm for that. So we're not going to be cooking those foods specifically to sell them. Speaking of selling things off, um, if you have an amiibo collection and you've been scanning your amiibo in, start selling off the armor that you don't need. Also, while you're playing through the game, if you get the same exact piece of armor and now you have a duplicate, sell the duplicate. <laughs> There's no reason to have two. Like, in my last video, I showed you how you can get Majora's Mask, which makes it so that all enemies think that you're going to be a friend. So because of that, there's no reason for me to have the Bokoblin, the Lionel Mask, all of those various masks in my inventory when this one mask achieves all of the same results. I'm a firm believer that while you're playing through until you're ready for that completion level, there's no reason to keep all that inventory 
cluttered up with outfits that you're never gonna be using. Great example of that, my barbarian armor is now three star, which gives me a defense of 24. So there's no reason I need the phantom armor anymore. Sell each of those for 600 rupees each. And that's an easy 1800 rupees, just like that for armor that I'm never gonna be wearing. I'm also gonna sell off this Bokoblin mask cause I don't need that. And this Valrooted Divine Helm that I got from Amiibo, I know that I can get it in game, so I don't need it. If you're looking for a good source of gourmet meat, heading your way to the Tabantha Tundra Snowfield, as well as pretty much all of Hebra, you're gonna be seeing moose everywhere, you're gonna be seeing bears. Make sure you take a picture of a bear, you're gonna need it for later. You're gonna be seeing foxes, all these animals that you see everywhere. Jump off of a horse, get a headshot, easy money cook it up now at this time there's no effective dragon farming yet because of their spawn patterns and how they spawn at different times and how they're immune to changes in time so we don't have an effective way to farm dinral's claws or shards or or horns or anything else like that as far as mini games go I've found a few of them, including the shooting range at Dronko's Pass right outside of Rito Village. That earns you well, 100 rupees. It's not the best. Remember how snowballing was nerfed because people got strikes every time? This is, this is Pondo's Lodge. So... You're not gonna have any snowballing for now. Although, strangely enough, there's still snowballs here. And there's still the snowling ramp. But now there's constructs down there. As of right now, it seems like if you, for example, wanted to for six consecutive hours just farm rupees, then your best bet is to do one of these mini games, one of which takes place on Eventide Island where you need to clear out three groups of monster forces. And then there's going to be a big pirate bay that opens up and then you need to clear out a pirate ship, which is another monster force. And then there's a shrine inside of there. So you should definitely go unlock that shrine. And then there's a whole flying thing thing on top in which you need to take one of the wings unpowered stand on it and then land it as close to the dead center as possible where you win 100 rupees constantly or occasionally you're going to win 300 rupees for landing a bullseye the problem with this is that it takes about 80 seconds to go from the beginning of starting one round to the next round it also costs 20 rupees to start a round so you're netting 80 rupees every 80 seconds, meaning that there's gonna be 45 instances of that within one hour, which equals 3,600 rupees, plus the occasional jackpot if you're really good, but if you fat finger it, you get nothing. No, zero, zip, not a nothing. It's not a brain dead way like snow bowling was, so I'm not gonna recommend it unless you get really good at it and you're gonna be doing it for multiple hours. At 80 rupees each, that nets you 3,600 rupees in one hour. That's not great. I'd rather go fight stone taluses. Okay, it's me. It took me exactly 12 and a half minutes to do the footage that you're seeing here in order to go after uh, the five... I, I don't know if there's more than five, but five rare stone taluses. It's my first time going to them, so I was unsure of where they were. I was distracted by enemies along the way. I didn't take optimal routes. I wasn't ready. I died twice because it turns out that one of them has the thing on the back. So I did splice that footage. You may catch on to that. And then from that, I got five amazing weapons. Sorry, no, six rare stone taluses. Uh, cause I have now five rare stone talus weapons that the most powerful one is it on top of this gloom spear. So it's 73, uh, not a great combination as I learned, but then there, I also have this one with the tack up on just a stick. It's just a stick with the drop on it and it's attack 55. And here's another one. I, I don't have anything to do with it in that amount of time, 12 minutes and 15 seconds. I was able to get nine diamonds. I started with two. 32 rubies, I started with 26, 23 sapphire and 23 topaz, I started with 18 of each. Opal, I started with 50, I now have 64. Amber is 175, I started with 36. I got no luminous stones, because we're not doing luminous taluses. And I have 96 flint instead of 89. That's probably because of the, the four ore patches that I hit along the way. Which, all of those gems value to 6,155 rupees. 6,155 
in 12 and a half minutes, which again, I didn't do it optimal. They respawn every blood moon. So your options are do the bad bird game for 3,600 rupees per hour or go out, get some stone taluses, get six amazing weapons or screw it, skip the one that requires the spear and get five amazing weapons. If I were to factor in how many in an hour, even though you can't do a full hour of them, that would be an average of 24,620 rupees per hour. But again, you can't do a full hour. It's just gonna be 12 minutes. Oh no, it's only 12 minutes for more money. That's what you want in an efficient guide. You just got 6,000 rupees in 12 minutes. You could do it every blood moon, which happens kind of regularly in this game. Don't farm meat, eat your meat. That way you could have your pudding. Don't do the bird game. I mean, obviously, you know, do the quest and so you, that you can unlock the shrine. Just go after rare stone taluses. Get yourself amazing weapons to then use inside of caves to break down ore patches and get more rare ore and perpetuate that. I guess I should also probably show you the location of the five in like, like nice quick screen grabs. That way you know where it is. Right from the Highland stable south of Lake Hylia, from this shrine, all you need to do is go a little bit to the right, and there's gonna be one right here. I'll travel back to the shrine, go over Lake of the Horse God, and then there's gonna be one right on the path or take the path with a horse, whatever you wanna do. Number three, right from Gerudo Canyon, you just come up this way, there's three Lazals right there. I used a, a, a frost thing on them and I got all their drops, and then I just climbed up here. That was number three. And then I went back to the same tower and then I flew over to this cave, went inside. There's rare stone talus number four. Then in this game, I actually don't have it unlocked. From Lake Illumini, which is surrounded by thorn bushes, you just hop out of there, hop into Tanagar Canyon right about here. I'll zoom out for you just south of the ancient columns. That was number five. And then from this shrine right next to Hyrule Forest, I just went north a little bit and there was my sixth one. They're not far from shrines and towers. They're made to be convenient. I got six amazing weapons. I got more money than you get from the bird game, from food, from whatever else. And in that amount of time, did those guys even do anything with the luminous ore? So in the time that I did all of Eventide, I got two amber, two flint, two more amber, Two more flint. So these guys, yeah, it's 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 a neat thing that you could do with your luminous ore. It's not efficient if you want rupees. If you want rupees, you want gems. If you want gems, go get gems. Defeat rare stone taluses, averaging 6,000 rupees in 12 minutes. Well, great, guys, I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, do me a favor, leave a thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turning on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.